Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and today I'm going to talk to you about the sense of taste. Yeah, it's one of our five senses, and it's very, very important. Because if you think about it, it does two major things. It, it allows us to enjoy all the great and wonderful aspects of food that we eat, and it helps us to encourage uh, uh, a well-balanced diet, and um, it's an incentive because we enjoy all of these different tastes to eat and be healthy and, um, and have nutritious food. But on the flip side of it, it also allows us to warn against things that uh, don't taste very well are hmm, probably pretty harmful. And so it's a way in which our body has evolved the mechanism of preventing us from eating things that perhaps have gone uh, terribly bad or, or spoiled or if we're uh, smelling something, um, and I, I say smell, but tasting something uh, and smelling something are interrelated, but the taste of something that perhaps is uh, harmful to us will have a, a negative effect and therefore we'll be able to uh, not want to eat it. And so all of this uh, sense of taste, again, involves the sensory neurons ability to detect the environment and the environment when it comes to taste are chemicals and so these chemicals are the food that we're consuming and what happens is when we place the food into our our mouth and our oral cavity the first thing it's going to encounter is our tongue and so there there you have where most of our taste receptors are located in the tongue and so I say most of them because some of them are on the back of the throat as well so you might have heard of the expression taste buds. So we have these buds, uh, and there's about 10,000 taste buds uh, in your mouth. And what's interesting is these buds are these little red circles. And so when food comes into, um, let me illustrate this, when food comes into our mouth, it encounters our tongue, and basically it travels down these little tunnels right here in these structures, these protruding structures called papillae. And I'll show you a bigger picture in a moment. And they travel down these little uh, indentations and they encounter these little circular, they're microscopic, so you need a microscope to see them, these little circles called taste buds. And then they're going to pick up the, the chemicals and then that's going to relay an action potential to the brain and then we're going to perceive taste. So. Backing it up a little bit, you can see here's the tongue right there. And so the tongue looks funny like that because normally you, you can't see the entirety of it when you stick out your tongue like this. And so you just see like the tip of it. But if you look at it closely in the mirror, and I invite you to do that, it's a little weird, but if you look at the tongue closely, you can see that there's these uh, raised areas called papillae right here. And again, you could see these uh, with, without a microscope, but then if you took a section like this of the tongue and looked at this particular area under the microscope, you'd see that it's circular all the way around, and then the food and mucus travels down into these crevices. And these little black dots are where you're actually tasting. These are where the buds are located. And so they're along the, the sides of the papillae along both sides right there. And so let's take a look of, of, of an illustration of this. And so the, the skin uh, of the tongue, if you will, is really the epithelium, and it's stratified. And so you may know, just like all the epidermis uh, of our skin, it's, it, it can slough off. And so can you imagine there's a lot of cells that are sloughing off in the tongue, and they play a protective role not allowing bacteria to enter the body. So this is what is simply the epithelium of the, of the tongue. But that's not involved in, in tasting. It's really these buds, which are I'm circling right here, these little black dots. And these are specialized cells. And we have something called a taste cell, appropriate, easy to remember. A taste cell, and it's, it's a type of epithelial cell that's specialized as a neuron, meaning that over here at the, at the very tip, it has these extensions called simply taste hairs, but you can think of them as dendrites, extensions of the cell membrane of the taste cell, which are going to pick up the chemicals of the food that we're eating. And so, you know, how does it reach in here? Well, there needs to be a pore, 
And so there's a pore right here where the, the taste is allowed, the chemicals are allowed to enter in to the bud. And then you have these supporting cells right here. And then below, you can see here the taste cells there and there in the bud, this is circular, uh, connect through an axon right there. And the sensory nerves ultimately go from the tongue all the way up into the brain. And then surrounding the nerve itself is connective tissue, which is right there, which is often below the epithelium. And so these nerve fibers are rather thick, and so these are like fascicles of different neurons which are uh, embedded in here. And here's, the, again, the supporting cell. So the reason it's called the taste bud is because it looks a lot like a rosebud. Here's a, put a picture here in case you haven't seen that before. So what's happening here is that this is uh, where the food is, right out here. And so what's happening is you get your food particles right here. And this food, these chemicals in the food are interacting with the hairs, the taste hairs. And the physicality of that, in other words, with the chemical interacting with the tips of these dendrites are going to allow for the taste cell itself is to initiate an action potential. So I'm not going to get into the detail of that, but I'll just simply state it that the food itself interacts with the with the dendrites or the or the taste hairs, which initiates a uh, an opening of sodium uh, receptors, uh, gated ones, chemical gated ligand. These are ligands out here, the chemicals, and it opens it up, and so the cell becomes a little bit more positive and so it reaches threshold and then there's a depolarization and then an action potential cascades down and all the way to the brain and so these taste buds are pretty cool and again here's a picture of the tongue uh, we've seen this before here's the pili and then the taste buds again are on the sides inside the pili and so here they are they're like these little buds right here and again they're made up of supporting cells taste cells are the ones that are actually picking up the odor, the, the, the taste, and uh, the pores where the, where the chemicals are coming in. And then again, it's surrounded by uh, connective tissue, and then the, the uh, axons come through the connective tissue right there. And then this is just simply the epithelium of the, of the tongue, which is, uh, as you can see here, stratified. And so these taste cells are pretty cool. They're, they're modified epithelium, technically. So they're not like true nerve cells, but they act as a, as a neuron because they're, they are capable of communicating and they're capable of uh, being excited, meaning when a chemical interacts with them, they generate an action potential. And, and it's in these taste cells, I'm sorry, these taste hairs that are the portions of the cell that are sensitive to the chemicals because they're protruding from the taste bud, as you can see here. Um, and so here's a cool picture of the light microscope. Here's a taste bud. Here's the pore. So the food is coming in right here, and it's being picked up by those, by those uh, taste hairs. And then it's being transmitted, transmitted through a nerve. So the taste buds are located within the papillae of the tongue. And, they, um, and they're scattered really, uh, they're prominent through the tongue, but they're all throughout the mouth and larynx as well. And again, the chemicals are dissolved in saliva, and so they're wet, and so as it's not, you know, completely as understood as as I'm making it sound. It's like it's not really clear exactly how the the food interacts with the membrane and causes an action potential. So that's kind of interesting. And so one of the things that people like like to talk about is the fact that some of these taste cells or taste receptors are particularly uh, sensitive to a particular kind of taste. And when I say kind of taste, meaning like sweet, sour, bitter, that, that sort of thing. Um, depends on what you're reading. If you read really closely into the, into the literature on, on taste buds, you'll find the truth is that these taste buds can really pick up any of those tastes. But also, they're a little bit more sensitive to one particular kind than the other. They're slightly specialized. So I'm going to go ahead and, and discuss what, what we know about that. That we know that, that sweet receptors are kind of plentiful near the tip of the tongue. It's a picture of Albert Einstein here, the tip of the tongue right here, the sweet. And then sour is found along here, or along the sides. In other words, the specialization of, of detecting sour. 
Here you could see um, where what I'm talking about. The sour is lateral on the side there. Uh, a little bit of a salt specialization towards the tip to the side and sweets up in the front and bitters towards the back. So whatever that may be to you, it, it's, it, it's, I find it kind of interesting because things that are potentially dangerous are often in the sour bitter area. And so possibly this is a, a mechanism where when we taste something in the back, we might want to heave it out uh, before we actually swallow it. And so uh, again, the salt receptors are prominent right over here in the tip on the lateral side. The bitter is, is a, again on the back of the tongue right there. And um, you know what, what does it mean to have these particular tastes? Like what is sweet? Well, sweet, as you may know, uh, are, sugars are mostly sensed by these taste receptors. Sugars are carbohydrates, monosaccharides in particular, some disaccharides are detected. So those are the chemicals we're talking about, monosaccharide, disaccharide, and some amino acids have a sweet taste. In other words, those chemicals are de detected by the hair cells of the taste receptors and the perception in the brain is that that is sweet. Sour, things that are sour are often slightly acidic. And so things that have a lot of hydrogen ion concentration and it's characteristic of an acid to be sour. Like for example, a lemon is sour. It, it has uh, citric acid in it. And, and salty generally is a, determined by, the, by these metallic ions, like for example, in salt, it, when, when dissolved in the saliva, salt disassociates into sodium ions, which are metallic. And so the tongue, again, along the sides, uh, toward the front, to pick this up. And bitter uh, are alkaloids. And alkaloids tend to be things that are uh, not as good for us. And so uh, things like, for example, if you're tasting moldy bread, it's it may not taste very good to you. And so it's, it's kind of a mechanism that it's harmful. And so you may want to spit that out. And so I was mentioning, you know, here's a really great picture of a, under the light microscope of the buds, as you can see here. And then uh, food would be passing here that have those chemicals in them dissolve, dissolved in water. And the taste buds are, are, are sensitive to one or two of these in particular. And one is likely to dominate, for example, like sweet. And again, another great picture. Here's the bud itself. You can't really make out each every of every cell, but there's a receptor cell in there, a supporting cell, and the pore is a, allowing the hairs to protrude, so you can actually detect these chemicals on the tongue. And then ultimately, this is traveling right in this particular area right here in the brain, where taste is uh, congregates, and the perception is like, hmm. I love that taste of <laughs> sweet lemonade, a combination of sweet and sour. And so uh, I hope this conversation about the sense of taste was interesting to you and um, it's making me a little bit hungry. <laughs> so I'm glad the video is coming to a conclusion. Thanks for watching.